This is a video a little bit different from normal. I'm going to try and create a new HF antenna. At least we are going to try and create a new HF antenna. Yes, with the help of you. Now, if you don't subscribe to this channel already, please do subscribe and please encourage others to subscribe because what I want to do is to try and create a new HF antenna that is simple to operate, that can be used both fixed station and portable, will fit into a small space. And I'm going to put forward ideas that I've got about this antenna, and you then can contribute your own ideas, your own thoughts, and maybe together we can create a new HF antenna, one that doesn't cost much at all, one that's very effective and will appeal to the wide masses of HF ham radio operators. So let's go! Hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. It's a nice sunny day today, a clear blue sky in Suffolk. And here we are in the, well, about the third week in September, so uh, it's really nice. Anyway, do you enjoy messing about with antennas? Well, I do. Have I discovered a new antenna? Probably not. Have I discovered uh, a new way of um, adjusting this antenna or modifying this antenna? Well, possibly. Anyway, it doesn't matter one way or the other. But I thought I'd give you some information on what I've been doing very recently. Now, NFED half-wave antennas are very popular and uh, the, uh, they're used all over the world now and it's one of the easiest ways of getting them in the air provided you've got something like a 49 to 1 uh, transformer, 49 to 1 un, -un and you attach it to the end of a half wave that antenna will operate on that half wave frequency plus the harmonics um, upwards so it's a very useful antenna and I decided to modify it slightly um, what I thought I'd do, I'd create a vertical antenna. So I'd have a half wavelength of wire, I'd have a quarter wave going vertical and a quarter wave going horizontal. And that probably, or theoretically, should be a, a vertical antenna with a single radial. And that's what I've done, and in actual fact it works very well. And you don't really have to have any modifications apart from the fact that you need a vertical section and a horizontal section. The only thing I would say is because the horizontal section is fairly low to the ground, probably the feed impedance has dropped a bit. So it's possible that rather than a 49 to 1 un, -un perhaps a 30, uh, was it, uh, uh, 66, uh, yeah, 36 to 1 un, -un would provide a better match. I don't know, I haven't tried it. Uh, the reason I say that is because the VSWR is not quite as low as it is when it's suspended higher in the air, and I think that's because the impedance has dropped, so it's not really a problem. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that um, and it's been fairly well proven now that ra a radial raised above the ground is much more effective than a radial on the ground. And uh, it's been suggested in various technical papers that a pair of radials above the ground are as good as quite a few radials on the ground. And uh, I've certainly found that putting, lifting the radials off the ground is better. So this particular vertical, um, the, the radial is around about um, nearly two metres above the ground. And then it goes vertical. So that's the basic antenna. But then I've been messing about more than that. I've been making some modifications to it, which I think are quite exciting. It needs more work done in it yet. But I'm going to tell you what I've done so far. You might want to follow that through or carry out your own experimentations but what I'm trying to do is to add bands to the NFED half wave or alternatively or as well make it a variable frequency antenna so let me just take you through what I've been doing for the antenna element I've used multi-strain plastic covered wire first task is to erect a mask and I've got this deck in here which is very convenient for attaching a mast. I've used a couple of elasticated straps as you can see to attach the mast to the rails of the decking. The telescopic mast is very easy to uh, erect and um, this one is uh, about 22 feet high I think 
and uh, each section goes up and locks in place and you need to make a mark so you don't pull the uh, top of the mast out too far. One of the things I do when I'm messing about with antennas, vertical antennas and putting up uh, against the fiberglass mast is I always pull them out a little bit away from the mast because there are some fiberglass masts that got a bit of conductivity in them and uh, you can be led up the garden path so when I'm ever um, initially uh, testing out a vertical antenna particularly with a mast I'm not that familiar with then I just put it away. I'll just show you what I've done here and uh, you can see that I've pulled it away from the uh, the mast just a bit uh, just to make sure that we don't get uh, any problems but because I'm using a an NFED half wave effectively um, obviously you need a 49 to 1 tra uh, transformer and I'm using a home built one that uh, I've been uh, using for quite a few years in fact I've built several of these and uh, as you can see it there it's quite a simple device in a in a box but it works uh, it's a single core but it, it does the job. So I'd run a quarter wavelength of wire along the wooden rail and the next job was to attach the far end of the wire to the top of the mast and then raise the remaining quarter wave of wire up in the air and then I was going to end up with an L-shaped antenna quarter wave vertical, quarter wave horizontal and fed at the end with that Anun, the 49 to 1. Anun. For my testing I was using the ICOM IC705, I like that transceiver. Nice display, works extremely well. And I was also using a little portable CW key which enabled me to get some very quick reverse beacon reports around the world. So what have we got so far? We've got an L-shaped antenna. We've got a vertical section which is a quarter wave. We've got a horizontal section which is a quarter wave and we're feeding it at the end with a 49 to 1 unun. Now, generally speaking, it's regarded that there will be a little bit of forward gain in the direction of the radial, the single radial. And I've got my radial actually pointing uh, slightly west of north. And the very first contact I had, the very first CW contact I had, was with W1AW, the ARRL headquarters station. I only got a 579 and that was running just 10 watts. And that was fairly late at night, around about 11 o'clock at night on 20 meters. What the gain is in that direction, I don't know. It's only very modest, probably perhaps one or two dB, but it does have a bias in that direction. But this antenna will work on 20 meters and 10 meters because it's effectively an NFED half wave and we know an NFED half wave works on its harmonic. So the fundamental is 20 meters because the antenna is 10 meters long or 16 foot, whatever you, each direction. And therefore the second harmonic is in the 10 meter band. And although 10 meters wasn't open, I got a good VSW on 10 meters as well as the 20 meter band. So the next thing to do was to look at what we could do next. Now here's something that many of you may not know. We're all familiar with loading an antenna. If we put an inductance in an antenna, we can lower its frequency. But we can also stretch an antenna. We can actually raise the frequency of an antenna without changing its length. And we achieve that by putting a capacitance in series. If we put a capacitor in series with a half wave antenna, we can actually raise its frequency. And the place to put that capacitor is in the center. Now, if we put a capacitor in the center of the antenna, we raise the frequency, we raise the fundamental frequency. But the interesting thing is that that has very little effect on the second harmonic. So let's try putting a capacitor in series with the antenna and see what happens. Now, when I was on location in Suffolk, I didn't have a capacitor, but you can make one by twisting two wires together. So what I did, I cut the antenna in the center and then I joined two short wires to each side of that break and then twisted them together. So those two wires twisted together formed a capacitor. 
And you, as, you, as you increase the amount of wire that's twisted together, so you increase the capacitance. You actually don't need much of the sort of frequency we're, we're talking about. And bear in mind that I'm still talking about an antenna that is vertical, quarter wave vertical, quarter wave horizontal. Anyway, what I did is I formed a capacitor and I found that the fundamental frequency was raised, but the second harmonic stayed almost the same. And I was able to actually change the frequency of this antenna Without changing the length of it, I could change the frequency from 14 megahertz to 18 megahertz, the 17 meter band. And then I had an antenna which was resonant on the 17 meter band and the 10 meter band, yet it was actually a 10 meter length of wire which should resonate on 20 meters and 10 meters. So inserting the capacitor, I'd raised the fundamental frequency. This really is so crude, it's unbelievable, but it works. Basically, I've got the capacitor there, which I've already shown you, which is a twisted wire. So there's an open circuit there between that wire and that wire. And there's a capacitor there, which I've created by twisting the wires together. And we know that in that state, this antenna resonates on 18 megahertz and 29 megahertz. In other words, it covers the 17 meter band and the 10 meter band. But if I was to short circuit that there, I'd regain my resonance of 20 meters because this originally was a 20 meter antenna in fed half wave. Now this idea will also work, of course, uh, if you use the antenna as a conventional horizontal end fed half wave. And I'll just show you something that uh, I've been experimenting with in my garden. It's pretty crude, but as all experimentation uh, is, you have to start somewhere. And the easiest way is to start with the quickest way and then refine it as you find that it works. If you follow that, I think you do anyway. This is an arrangement in the garden. It's only two meters above uh, the ground, but as you can see, it's fairly basic. This is the capacitor. This actually creates enough capacity to resonate this antenna on the fundamental uh, to the 17 meter ham radio band. Up here, I've got a couple of uh, wires there. If I short those together, if I hold those together like that, or they clip together like that, very crude, um, that shorts that out and the antenna becomes resonant on 20. So in this condition, the antenna is resonant on 20 meters and 10 meters. If I open that circuit there, it's now resonant on 17 meters and 10 meters. And obviously one, th one thing that you could do was to put a little switch in there, particularly for QRP operation, a little switch in there. And when you close the switch to short those out, you've got 20 and 10, and when they're open, you've got 17 and 10. So you've got a tri-band antenna on a wire that is 10 meters long and fundamentally a 20 meter end-fed half wave. For all my measurements, I've been using a rather old re-expert AA230. This has now been replaced by the uh, AA230 Zoom with a lot more features. But a quick uh, shout out for Waters and Stanton because we stock the entire range of re-expert antenna analyzers. They're wonderful pieces of gear. And of course, we stock a lot of other things as well. So as well as running this video channel, we do offer some excellent bargains and prices in the ham radio field so do check our website regularly and see all the latest models oh and by the way if you speak to the guys in the shop or you send them an email just mention that you've watched my videos they like to know that uh, the videos are appreciated and indeed watched now my next task is to replace those twisted wires with a variable capacitor that way I should be able to tune this antenna to a number of frequencies. I think with a capacity of maximum of about 50 or 60 puff, I should be able to tune between 20 meters and 12 meters. So what have we learnt about uh, the antenna we're trying to design or whatever? Well, it's an infed half wave. An infed half wave starts off at a half wave length of wire which happens to also resonate on its harmonics. And it needs to be fed with a, an anan at the end 
popularly a 49 to 1 anon. The length of the antenna wire will be slightly shorter than the calculations for a half wave dipole would suggest because the end of a half wave is very sensitive and that anun at the end presents a bit of load into the antenna so you'll find that the antenna will be slightly shorter than what you would expect it to be. No problems, just uh, use an antenna analyzer and adjust it accordingly. We also found out that we can add a capacitor in series with the antenna. Now that capacitor has maximum effect when it's at a max point of maximum current. I'm fortunate at the moment, uh, this holiday park I'm in, um, we've got lots of ground to experiment in, which you may be able to see behind me. Unfortunately it's a rather windy day, so I suspect I've got quite a lot of wind on the microphone, but anyway. I'll turn back with my back to the wind, hoping that uh, this has come across okay. Well, there's a lot more work to be done on this antenna, I feel. Certainly the variable capacitor, I think, uh, is going to be a great advantage because it means to say that you can tune the antenna to virtually any frequency from the fundamental upwards. And uh, although it's basically being conceived as perhaps a portable antenna, it will have applications, I'm sure, as a base station antenna as well. Now, I'd like to hear your views on this and also your experiments on this because this is joint effort. You can carry out your own experiments on this and perhaps come up with some, some other ideas. Certainly on the mechanical design, I, I hold my hands up and say that what I've shown you so far is the concept. Um, when it comes to the engineering and, and packaging it, it's a different ball game altogether. And I'm sure that some of you out there have got some ideas on that. But it's work in progress. And I'm going to do another video on this, a follow-up video, once I've done some more work on this antenna. But in the meantime, you can enjoy experimenting and messing around with a very simple idea, but one that holds a lot of potential. Don't forget to uh, tell your friends uh, in the... Uh, in the club or other on the air about um, this idea link them to this video and also don't forget to press the subscribe button because that alerts you to upcoming videos and talking about upcoming videos we will have another video very shortly so you keep in touch enjoy your ham radio and as usual i'll look forward to seeing you in the next video bye for now So, now it's up to you. You give me your ideas, your thoughts.